Welcome to the fall 2013 release of the UT Energy Poll on American Perspectives on Energy. My name is Cheryl Kirschenbaum. I'm director of the poll. And what the poll is is an objective, um, authoritative source of public perspectives on all things energy. And what we hope is that this data will be used to inform discussion, business planning, and policy development. What we do each wave is we look at a number of factors from prices and availability to energy concerns, satisfaction, and even voting behavior, voting preferences. But each wave we also give ourselves a chance to look at hot topics. In the past, we've considered hydraulic fracturing, voting behavior um, more geared toward the election uh, that was coming up in the fall of 2012, consumer attitudes, and in this wave we looked a little closer at the energy water nexus. To give you a bit of background, the first questionnaire was developed in 2010, and the inaugural launch was the following year. While this is a UT Energy poll, we collaborate internationally with energy experts, industry experts, NGOs, um, academics all around the world, and producers and consumers. This is the fifth wave of the poll, and it's an online survey. This, uh, this time it was conducted between September 5th and September 23rd of 2013, and this wave included 2,144 respondents, and all of the data is weighted to reflect U.S. Census demographics. So just to give you a sense of what that looks like, we break things down in many ways. So what we get is an overall look at American attitudes on energy, and then we could look at specific age groups, gender, political affiliation, income, but a whole bunch of other factors as well, from level of education to race, and on and on and on. So it gives us a real variety of ways to look at the same kinds of questions. Getting right into it, interest in energy seems to be down. Now, by this slide, you can see it's moved just four percentage points down in the last four months when, we're at, uh, when we ask consumers if they're interested in energy. But we see this across the board on all topics. So when we ask people how valuable energy is to them, how important energy issues are to them, how much they're following energy issues, we see a general trend down over the past six months. We're not exactly sure why that's taking place, but it's easy to speculate that it might have to do with the frequency of intense storms. It might have to do with the fact that this isn't an election year where there's so much focus on energy. We really don't know, but we are seeing an overall downward trend. Now, on this slide, there are a whole number of issues related to interest in energy, engagement in energy, and while it's not important for this presentation to look at each specific point, what I wanted to talk about is how you can kind of look at trends based on things like income. So what you can see here, the blue dots are consumers making more than $50,000 a year. The red are those making less than $50,000 a year. And what you can see is the more people are making, the more engaged they seem to be on energy issues. Everything from self-reporting that they're knowledgeable on energy to whether they're following uh, local and national energy news, to how often they're even asked advice on energy. Income seems to be a um, significant factor in some regards uh, on how engaged the public is on energy in general. These are the same questions looking at men and women. You can see there's a big split on some of these issues, most notably here, people who report that they're knowledgeable on energy. So men uh, at 44% are more than twice as likely as women to consider themselves knowledgeable. As I said, this is self-reporting. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they actually are. But um, men overall seem to just be following energy issues a little more closely, considering energy issues more important, 67% of men to 57% of women um, across the board. If you want any more detail on any of these issues, all of these slides will be available on the website utenergypoll.com, or feel free to reach out to me, and I'll give you that information at the end of the presentation. One more look at this by a political party. You can see that generally libertarians are more engaged, uh, think they're more knowledgeable on a whole variety of these energy issues, and Democrats, Republicans, and independents all seem to move generally together, although it varies based on topic. Now, what we noticed, aside from this um, lower engagement, lower interest in energy issues, is there's a lot of inconsistency. And this is just an example. Um, looking at specifically natural gas, one of the questions we look at is what consumers want the federal government to be focused on developing. So the top answer uh, was renewable technologies. Clearly, these aren't mutually exclusive. Respondents could choose as many as they wanted. Um, but natural gas ranks relatively high. I mean, 82%, so a majority of Americans would like to see the United States develop natural gas. And at the same time, similar question, should we export natural gas to other countries? And what you can see is in just six months, the number of people who agree with the statement rose from 28% to 34%, and the number who disagree uh, decreased from 39% 
to 30%. So there seems to be more interest. Maybe people are more aware of natural gas. It's in the news quite a bit. There's a lot of commercials about it. It seems to be becoming more and more part of the energy conversation. And indeed, an energy transition is taking place. In the next decade or two, we may see natural gas overtake oil as our, our top um, energy source. So natural gas is important. We're paying attention to it. But natural gas is inherently related to hydraulic fracturing. And what we're seeing is increasing awareness, but less support. So first we ask respondents, are you familiar with the term hydraulic fracturing, also, consider, or also known as fracking? That's the red line here. A year and a half ago, it was at 32%. By this fall, we're at 40%, kind of wavering, 42%, 40%. So more people seem to be aware of hydraulic fracturing. It's been in some movies, some documentaries. A lot of celebrities are very vocal about it. So there is an increase in awareness. However, among those who say that they're familiar with it, we then ask, do you support its use? And that has uh, dropped from 48% in the spring of 2012 to 38% in the fall of 2013. So even though more and more people want to see us develop natural gas, fewer people support the use of hydraulic fracturing. Now, in terms of who's heard of hydraulic fracturing, that varies in many different uh, demographics. That varies many different ways across demographics. So you can see it varies by age. Uh, older Americans are more likely to be familiar with these terms than younger Americans. We also see differences by race. Whites are most likely to say they've heard of hydraulic fracturing. Um, and we see differences by, by political party. Democrats are least likely to say that they are familiar with the term hydraulic fracturing or fracking. And then, of course, looking at those two inconsistent answers, um, this compares how respondents, I broke it down by men and women, but we could break it down any number of ways, uh, how people feel about whether we should develop natural gas and whether they support hydraulic fracturing. So you can see that 85% of women uh, think we should develop natural gas, and yet only 33 support hydraulic fracturing. There's a similar but smaller split for men, but still significant. 77 say that we should develop natural gas, but only 41% say that they support hydraulic fracturing. There's a disconnect, I think. Um, messaging has probably not been clear on hydraulic fracturing and natural gas. Shifting gears a bit, because I want to cover a lot of the kinds of topics we look at in the poll. This is a very large survey, and so we have a great deal of information. But we're very interested in the language of energy, because it seems that a lot of way, in a lot of cases, the language of energy isn't very clear. Um, we are interested in how language influences consumers. And so we look at things like, does labeling something at major retail outlets uh, energy efficient or energy saving, does that make a difference for people? Generally. On the surface, it doesn't. I mean, we can see 56, 59 percent trust those labels in both cases. 25 percent in both think that people who believe those labels are fooling themselves. And somewhere in the middle, 40, 42 percent say that those labels exaggerate their claims. But looking at men and women, we respond to these labels differently. At least it appears so. So women seem to have the same amount of trust in energy, uh, energy saving and energy efficient, 60 percent and 59 percent. But Men seem to respond differently to energy saving. The word saving, I don't know why, but uh, that gets a six-point decrease in trust from energy efficiency. So we can learn a little bit by how we use the language of energy, um, what we're trying to tell consumers, and perhaps how better to um, inform people when we want to get a message across. This is not a pop quiz, and I don't mean to make it sound like one with this question, but we have a few general energy literacy questions just to get a sense of where people are. And one of them is, which country do you believe is the largest foreign supplier of oil for the United States? This is how people responded. 58% chose Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. 15% uh, chose Iraq, followed by Canada, Venezuela, and then Mexico and Russia down below. Um, for those who, who just want to see the actual answers, uh, Canada is actually our top supplier of fire and oil, followed by Saudi Arabia at 16%, Venezuela at 11%. Iraq is all the way down here at 6%. So this gives us a sense that maybe we're not sure where we're getting our energy from. Um, it, it's hard to say why. It could be because it has to do with where we fought some recent wars or a whole bunch of different issues. But our largest supplier, uh, largest supplier of uh, foreign oil is, is actually our neighbor, Canada. Looking at climate change, climate change is something that we've been following each wave of the poll. And you can see that uh, those who think that climate change is occurring has risen from 65 to um, 73, then 72% um, within the past year and a half. Um, notably, when it did have this jump, this eight-point jump um, between the spring and fall of 2012, we had record storms, record droughts, 
an election focused on energy, and a lot of other factors that could have influenced opinions. But it's interesting to see that they, um, they've really stayed rather steady over time. Those who think climate change is occurring clearly varies in a lot of different, uh, among a lot of different groups. Democrats are far more likely to think it's occurring than Republicans, for example. 87% of Democrats think that climate change is occurring, while just 52% of Republicans say it is. And then Libertarians and Independents are at 66 and 68% respectively. We also see differences uh, among race. Um, Hispanics and African Americans are more likely than whites to say that climate change is occurring, but those um, that may reflect that uh, uh, Hispanics and African Americans are more likely to fall within the um, Democrat line here. So there's a lot of factors playing a role, but we're following these trends as closely as we can. We also look at what Americans are concerned about. Our top energy concerns are the cost of gasoline and the cost of electricity. Maybe not surprising, that's what tugs on our purse strings, what affects our wallets the most. And down here, we're, we're still concerned, 51, 55, 60%, but not nearly as much with things that affect the environment. So we're less concerned about carbon emissions from how we produce and consume energy. We're less concerned about production of energy through domestic, uh, through hydraulic fracturing on the uh, natural environment. And we're less concerned about um, oil drilling. Now, something that has shifted is the depletion of water resources. More Americans are concerned now about the depletion of water resources than in the past. And as I said, the energy water nexus was something that we highlighted on this poll. So we looked a little more closely at that. We wanted to see, um, whether people prioritize water conservation. And this is just uh, for comparison with how they feel about energy efficiency. Now, nearly two thirds of Americans say that they prioritize water conservation, 65%. Um, not quite as high as energy efficiency at 72%. And energy efficiency will be that topic of the next wave in the spring of 2014. So stay tuned for more on that. But, you know, at two thirds, that's not too bad because, um, you know, water depletion is a pretty significant issue that we're facing right now. In terms of who's prioritizing energy efficiency, that's not uniform either. This is an example of how we can break things down regionally. Um, in the Northeast, we're a little more focused on energy efficiency. Maybe people are using energy differently, heating their homes differently, more attuned to what their bills come in on um, the energy appliances that they're using. And also, what level of influence do the following have on the environment? So when we're thinking about what people are concerned about, um, whether people are paying attention to issues like climate change, like hydraulic fracturing on the, on the natural environment, um, who's really responsible for having some kind of significant influence? Now, 68% say that what the US government does uh, makes a significant difference in the environment. But 72% think that large corporations do. And just 37% chose my personal actions. That in itself gives you reason to, pay, to take pause because a lot of campaigns that we see on TV and elsewhere uh, focus on personal actions that matter, things that we can do um, that will have a broader impact. And yet if only 37% uh, of people think that makes any difference, well, that's going to influence the decisions they make, the products they buy, what they're attuned to. We always look at how satisfied Americans are generally with the job that each of these groups on um, the right side of the slide uh, how satisfied they are uh, with how these groups address the energy issues most important to consumers. Um, people feel that they're doing a fair job. The highest answer by far is you or your household. So people are pretty satisfied with themselves, at least compared to everything else on the list, but also encouraging. Uh, we're fairly satisfied with engineers at um, 38%. We're uh, universities at 31%, research institutes, think tanks, renewable energy companies, these are all ranking higher than a lot of other uh, groups on the list. You can see President Obama, people are satisfied with him on energy at 22%. U.S. Congress is all the way at the bottom at 9%, so we see a great deal of variety. I realize this slide is probably a little hard to read, but feel free to please do, you know, go online and you can see all the slides in greater detail and take time looking over that list and seeing what else we've got. So that is just really a snapshot of what we've been doing here at the University of Texas at Austin Energy Poll. I encourage you to visit the website, utenergypoll.com. Reach out to me, Cheryl.Kirschenbaum at macombs.utexas.edu, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, look a little closer at any particular point, any particular group, and we have a huge amount of data. This barely scratches the surface of what we can do. So thank you for watching uh, our latest release, and I look forward to hearing from you.